Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Ingenious ECS1112 FP Managed Gigabit Switch. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront and I'll put it in the description below. First, I want to thank Ingenious for sending this to me for a review and making this video. Full disclosure, I did not pay for this switch. So first thing, let's go over some of the specs. On the front, we have our eight one gigabit ports, which will be doing our PoE plus. And then on the side, we have two RJ45 inputs, which will be for uplinks. And then we have two SFP slots, which we could use for uplinks as well. And they are one gigabit. On the left hand side we have a console port and in the box they do give you a console port. You would have to get a separate adapter for unless you have a VGA on the back of your PC. They have a button for an LED mode as well as a reset button and there is a fan in the switch. So the eight ports are capable of 10 megabits, 100 and 1000 megabits per second. It's a fully featured layer two switch and it provides 802.3 AT or AF PoE+. It has a switching capacity of 24 gigabits per second. And with our uplinks, we could put them into an aggregate if we would like. We can manage this switch by the Ingenious Cloud. What we're gonna do in this video, I'm gonna put it into my Ingenious Sky Key. Now I'm gonna get the switch powered up and then we'll get into some of the configuration. Now I've logged into my Sky Key, we need to get the switch adopted into here. So I'll go to my recent project. And under pending, we could see the switch in here. We're gonna click on it and then press add. All right, now we could see the switch adopted into our sky key. If we click on the device name, it's gonna bring up some of the configuration. Under the configuration tab, we could switch the device name, so the host name of the switch, and then we could look at our port settings. On the port settings, we could see ports one to 12, and then all these trunk ports, we could see the link status. So most of the ports are down because I only have the uplink connected right now on port nine. The mode, this is where we would set the speed of the port. We could also enable and disable the flow control. Under power budget, we could see the total power, which is 130 watts, and we could see consume power is zero because we don't have any devices plugged into the switch. If we look under PoE port settings, we could see that on all the ports, the power over ethernet is enabled and we could see the priority is set to low. We could also specify the power limit type Right now it's just on auto class, but we could go to user defined and say how many watts we wanted to go to a specific port. In the sky key, I can't see where you do most of the configuration. I don't know if they have it so that we could set up VLANs or 802.1X, but I can't find it in the sky key. If you guys know how to, please leave it in the comments below. We could go to the switch just by the IP. So if we copy and paste this into a web browser, it will bring us to the switch. And I find it a little strange that the switch username and password are still default after it's adopted into the sky key. I would have thought that it would take in my credentials from the sky key and passed it on to the switch, but it doesn't. So we're just gonna put in a min and then password. Now we're into the switch and we could see on the left hand side that we have a lot more configuration options. For the summary, it's just gonna tell us our device name, our firmware version, serial number, base MAC address and check code, system uptime and fan status, which the fan is okay. And you guys may be able to hear that a little bit as it's just sitting beside me. We could go under IP settings and if we click on IP management, it's gonna tell us that this device has been managed, IP settings are disabled. So all our IPv4, IPv6, the IPv4 network is disabled and that's all being controlled by the sky key. It has ARP settings, static route, neighbor table, system time, port settings. And if we click on port settings, it's showing that this is also managed by the sky key. So it seems like there is a limited amount of configuration that's pushed over to the sky key, but then the other configurations you have to do right from the switch. We could go down to the layer two features and here we could do link aggregation. We could do mirroring. We could look at our spanning tree protocol. LBD, our MAC address table, LLDP, and so on. We click on link aggregation. We could do the port trunking. And here we could set up a lag group if we would like. We could take a look at our VLANs and we have 802.1Q and then we have PVID. They also have a voice VLAN. And under 802.1Q, this is where we would set up our VLAN. So if we wanted to add a new VLAN, we would click add and then we would use the tag port or the untag port. 
Under management, we have our system information, our user management. So we would want to change the default passwords. Right now, the, the username is just admin and the password is password. So we would want to make that something strong. You could also set up SNMP. We could create some access list and we could also do quality of service. Under security, we have our 802.1x controls as well as radius server access, port security, port isolation, and DOS. Under monitoring, we could look at port statistics. And right now I just have port nine plugged in. That's my uplink to one of my Unify switches. We could look at Armon and our log. Under diagnostics, we could do cable diagnostics, which would show us if the cable is working properly. So if we select port nine and we could do a test, if I do a test on this right now, it will bring down the switch as it's our uplink port, so we're not gonna do that. We could do a ping test, an IPv6 ping test, and a traceroute. All in all, I think this switch has a lot of features and a lot of configuration you could do. I just wish you could do it in one centralized location. If I'm gonna be having my access points and my switch in a controller, I would like to be able to do all the configuration there instead of doing some in the sky key and then some in the switch. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.